years of uncertainty and a global pandemic that has proven to be one of the most challenging events in the history, we prepare to tackle what lay ahead. And as we continue to extract the possible from the impossible, this year taught us above all that our voices, no matter how big or small, can change the world. A war in Ukraine, the end of Roe, it was the year of death of the queen. In 2022, we were inspired by Volodymyr Zelensky, but it was also the year of Elon. We nudged an asteroid and may have cracked the mystery of fusion, but it was also a year of inflation, wild deadly weather, chaos at the border, airline meltdowns, mass shootings. It was a bad year for authoritarians, from Putin to Brazil's Bolsonaro, who was defeated for re-election. It was a good year as Iran's women rose up, even as Afghanistan descended into a new dark age of women's rights. In 2022, we saw statesmanship and heroism, but also flamboyant grifting, narcissism, and bigotry, a crypto meltdown. Let's take a look at all of these events. Outgunned and outmanned military has held out against Russia for almost two months. And as Russia intensifies its attack on Ukraine's east and south, Western governments are dispatching heavier weaponry and warplanes to support resistance efforts. President Joe Biden approved a new 800 million aid package last week that dramatically expanded the scope of weapons Washington has supplied to Kyiv. The package included 155 mm howitzers, a serious upgrade in long-range artillery to match Russian systems, 40,000 artillery rounds and 11 Soviet-designed Mi-17 helicopters. The latter fit well with Ukraine's existing arsenal because those use a similar operating system as the Mi-8 helicopters that Kyiv has used for decades, said Alexei Moraviv, a national security expert at Australia's Curtin University. Ukraine has also received fighter aircraft and related parts from other nations, Kirby said. He declined to specify what kind of aircraft has been supplied or which countries have provided them. At the start of a visit to the three Baltic states that are NATO members, German Foreign Minister Annalena Baerbock said Wednesday that Germany has delivered anti-tank weapons, Stinger anti-aircraft missiles, and other things that we didn't talk about in public so that the deliveries could be carried out quickly and securely. Other Western nations have also moved to deliver more sophisticated weapons to Ukraine as the war evolves. Britain in April pledged a defense support package worth some $130 million that includes more anti-tank missiles, air defense systems, and non-lethal equipment. Norway announced Wednesday that it would donate 100 Mistral air defense missiles on top of the light anti-armor weapons it promised late last month. Dutch Prime Minister Mark Root said Tuesday that his government is sending heavier military equipment soon. Farther afield, the Australian government has started sending Bushmasters to Kyiv after Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky asked lawmakers in Canberra for the armored vehicles last month. The 20 promised Bushmasters will protect Ukrainians from explosives, artillery, shrapnel, and small arms fire, Canberra said. Ukraine will require arms delivery well into the future if it is to fight off Russia.
It gives me great pleasure to extend to Her Majesty a hearty welcome on behalf of the people and the government of India and on my own behalf. I am glad to be able to extend an equally warm and cordial welcome to His Royal Highness the Duke of Edinburgh, who is no stranger to us. The United Kingdom and India have had close relations for some 200 years. This long association between our two countries has left an abiding influence on our minds and on our institutions.
2022's Person of the Year on Wednesday, saying he inspired Ukrainians and won global accolades for his courage in resisting Russia's devastating invasion. Refusing to leave Ukraine's capital of Kyiv at the outbreak of the war as Russian bombs rained down, the former comedian rallied his compatriots in broadcasts from the capital and traveled across his war-torn nation. The publication noted in bestowing its annual title. On Tuesday, Zelensky visited Ukraine troops near the front lines in eastern Ukraine. Zelensky's success as a wartime leader has relied on the fact that courage is contagious. It spreads through Ukraine's political leadership in the first days of the invasion as everyone realized the president had stuck around.